I would like to show you a number trick. So regular scientific calculator, I'm not trying to conceal anything, but I would like you, Brady, to tell me what to write. I'm gonna put some fives into the calculator. Maybe you call this trick the surprising fives, I don't know. I, maybe that's what I call it, and someone else could think of a better name. But I'm gonna put the digit five into this calculator as many times as you want me to. So tell me how many times you'd like to put the number five. Six. So five, 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 five. five. Whatever you'd have told me, we'd have run with that, and the next two steps are the same whatever we do. The first step is to take the reciprocal of this number. You can see why we're doing this on a calculator. I know that you could do it, given time, but the reciprocal of x to the minus 1, or 1 over the answer, uh, gives us this number, handily known as 1 over 555, 555. So far, so good. And now, we take the sine of that answer. So I'm just going to do sine of the answer, uh, and we get this result. Which is where I want to check what you notice. It's pi! Is it? What's pi like? It's pi like. Oh, times 10 to the minus 8. It's pi like enough to cause a reaction in anybody who's seen pi before, I think. Okay, so we, we, we tried it once. You gave me six fives. I invite you to give me a different number of fives now. Okay, uh. One. One five. There's a five. Good, I like this mathematician in the making here, Brady. You, you see something surprising, you test the extreme cases. A really, really sensible mathematical thing. So reciprocal, 1 over 5 is otherwise known as 1 over 5 or 0.2, and I take the sign of that answer. And it gives me the answer 3.4906 times 10 to the minus 3. Not so pi-like. I kind of talked you into giving me more than one 5. I deliberately said give me as many as you want. Uh, so I invite you to try this experiment again. How many 5s would you like this time? 13. 13 fives, let's see if our calculator will cope. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 fives. So uh, that, as a reciprocal, is 1.8 times 10 to the negative 13. My calculator's given up trying to display it as a fraction. This is a tiny number. Take the sign of that. Here we go. Yeah, pi-like. I mean, if you know your pi expansion, this is pretty pi-like. Except for the whole thing at the end, which you did spot pretty quickly, that times 10 to the minus 15 this time. That's the trick. It's a classic example of what I like to call unexpected pi. <laughs> pi turns up literally all over the place in mathematics, particularly when you don't expect it. Obviously, when you're doing stuff to do with circles, it turns up. We haven't mentioned a circle so far. Pi has turned up somewhere. There are several clues that I've kind of concealed from you, but... Um, in the rest of the video, I'd like to explain why this happens, but it, it's worth leaving as a, as a surprise. If you want to go and, if anyone watching the video wants to figure out what's going on, now, now's the time to do it. Before I give it all away, the only clue I'm going to give is your calculator should be in degrees mode. Otherwise, you won't get as nice a result. That's the clue. Have a think. The reason I like this trick, it's not so much a trick, is that it's a surprise, and I think you need three bits of maths to understand it. And it's a nice example of simple bits of maths coming together to give you a surprise. Chapter one, radian. Oh, look at that, it's like an audio book. <laughs> <laughs> Brady, do you, do you know what a radian is? It's like a unit for measuring angle, isn't it? Yeah, we, and we're used to using degrees. So if I drew a circle and chopped it up into a quarter circle, that right angle would be 90 degrees, which means there's 360 degrees all the way around. 360 is this arbitrary number that we've sort of inherited. We didn't have to use it. In fact, we still don't have to use degrees. Almost everybody learns about degrees at school, and it's a useful way of talking about how much you turn. 360, what they think, is to do with our year. We're 365 days is close to 360, so a sort of full cycle of a year is round about the 360s. There's, there's a connection in history there. The Babylonians used countings in base 60s, which is to do with 360 or 3600s, and all of these things are sort of historical accidents, and we still see this in our time measurements in hours and minutes. 360 is convenient, you can chop it under little bits, but there is a better way to measure angles. Let me show you the definition of radian. Now, this circle has a certain radius, and if you start deciding, I want to measure angles around this circle in some non-arbitrary way, you could use 400, say, and actually they do. They could call that gradients. 400 gradients all the way around. Yeah, I've heard of that. If you go to your calculator, there's a mode button that goes between degrees and radians and gradients. There's a G in there as well. So gradients means 400 bits around a circle. It's kind of like metric degrees, because then a right angle is 100. And we all kind of recognize right angles are important. And why 90 then? Uh, in some ways, gradients are very sensible. I think the French tried it for a while. They liked metricizing lots of things. But it didn't really catch on, and not a lot of people use it a lot. I'm sure people will comment if they found good examples of it being used. But even that's arbitrary. I mean, why pick 400? Why not go for 100? Why not go for 
a thousand. We could do anything and actually our choice is free, we just have to accept the consequences. So what you might want to do is pick a measure that has fewer horrible consequences and more nice consequences. And everything to do with a circle is tied up with its radius. You can already see a clue in the name radians, that's what I'm going to talk about. So this circle has a radius of r. One complete turn seems important. But another amount of a turn would be if you start walking around the circle some distance. Why don't we pick a distance that's already part of the circle, which is a radius. So if you know the radius, what would happen if you walked around the circle a radius is one radian. So the name is good if you shorten it to rad, it's, it's one radius of a turn. So it's, it's making length and angle measured the same way on a unit circle. It means if this radius is one, then you walk a distance one around the circle, you've gone one radian. It does have a consequence, which some people find nasty, but just deal with it, all right, is that all the way around the circle is not a nice number anymore. Or rather, it is a nice number, but it's not a rational number because you know the formula for distance around a circle is two pi r. If the radius is one, the distance around is two pi, which must mean then to do a full turn is two pi radians. Okay, so that's chapter one, we're almost there. The little summary is that if you accept that all the way around a circle is two pi radians, it was also known in olden days or in our previous less wise state as 360 degrees. I can now write this relationship down. Two pi radians is the same as 360 degrees, which means that we could say that pi radians is 180 degrees. It gets rid of this arbitrary two, and this gives us the relationship, the kind of the exchange rate, if you like. So one radian is the same as 180 over pi degrees. This relationship is important. That's chapter one of our little story. We've got to understand that radians are an alternative way to measure circles and they work like this. Chapter two then, small angles. If I show you a picture of a graph, here's a set of axes and here is what looks like a straight line graph. Uh, this is a relationship between two variables that is a linear thing, they call it linear because of straight lines. But if I show you that same graph on a bigger scale, you could realize that I could have drawn a graph like this. So the thing I'm trying to point out is that a sine wave, which is involved in our calculation, is, is a graph, it's a function, it has an input and output, but if you zoom in on this sine wave right about here, can you see that it looks a bit like this? So what we're saying is that although this is not a straight line function, part of it looks like it is. So if I zoom in, in fact, if you work in a certain angle measurement, which I'll label in a moment, then this straight line function, which is only true at the beginning, is actually the graph of y equals x whereas the original function is y equals sine x. And I hope you recognize now that the title is kind of relevant. When angles are small, sine x and x are basically the same thing. So here's my conclusion. You can go and look up some ways to prove it, but visually it's pretty convincing if you zoom in on the sine graph. Sine x is approximately x. Two caveats for small angles and only in radians which is important that we had chapter one available to us. If you drew a graph of this in degrees, which then this straight line does not have a gradient of one, which I'm claiming it is. If you, if you think about this line being going up to one here and you drop a line down here, that's, a, that's about 60 degrees there. So the gradient of that line in degrees is like one over 60, tiny number. So the question is what angle measurement do you need to make it have a gradient of one, which is what I'm claiming, well you need that to be one. And then it would be a gradient one, and then if you realize that like, that's a two, and then that's a three, my scale is a bit rubbish, but that means this must be pi, and that's two pi, and then we're back to our radians idea. So this fact, sine x is approximately x for small angles, and if they're measured in radians. End of chapter two. Chapter three, fractions. You remember that in the trick we did a reciprocal. Um, in fact, we did one over five, 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 five. And actually what's important is to recognize that as a decimal, that looks different. And actually when you gave me six, the calculator just spat that fraction back. It's like one over five, 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 five is one over five, 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 five. It's slightly annoying at the calculator, telling you the question when you just asked it what the answer is. So as a decimal, what we could do is do a bit of long division and work it out, or I could force the calculator to tell me. So six fives, if I do the reciprocal of that, one over that. You get one over five, 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 otherwise known as, according to my calculator, 0 0.0000018. And very faintly, you can see there's a dot above the second zero and a dot above the eight. Do you know what these dots mean? <laughs> I've never seen them. <laughs> um, in Europe, they wouldn't recognize them either. In Europe, they might write this like this but that entire bar, but that also might make you look horrified. Is that more familiar to you? Recurring. Yes. Um, for some reason, Britain has inherited the dot notation. Uh, you mark the, the place where it starts recurring with a dot and the place where it stops recurring with a dot, and then you just carry on. Most people use, in the rest of the world, I think use a line, they call it a vinculum. 
it's the same line name as the line between a numerator and a denominator. They say there's a fine line between a numerator and a denominator. And it's called a vinculum. Anyway, and this is one of them. The thing is, it's a recurring decimal. So if I didn't put the dots on here, if I wrote this carried out, it would be 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 8, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 8, and so on. So turning fractions into decimals. Now, what we could do, if you were so inclined, and maybe I encourage any watchers of the video, you could go the other way around. You could check this recurring decimal and say, if that's a recurring decimal, how do you turn that back into a fraction? It's actually a sort of school level skill, but when it's this longer recurring thing, it takes a little bit of guts to go through the process. But for now, there's one thing in this decimal expansion, which was not obvious in the fraction, that gives us a clue about why this is working. And it's the only numbers that are kind of significant in here. It's these two numbers, possibly followed by the zero after it. And if I just refer back to a piece of paper from chapter one, I'm trying to point out this number has turned up. And suddenly we get a glimpse of why these things are coming together. The conclusion of all three chapters is when we put these facts together and we'll do the trick again with all three facts now sort of under our control. And hopefully it becomes obvious why the unexpected pi turns up. So let's try it. First of all, you did one over five, 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 five. Do you accept that the answer to that calculation is small? Yeah. Which means we're in this world of small angle approximations. If I'm gonna do a sign of something, I'm in this world of small angle approximations. But, uh, and I didn't say at the very start, but I did admit it at the end, I needed your calculator to be in degrees, not these magic radians we've been talking about. So if I do one over five, 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 and then take the sign of it, which is what our whole calculation was, it is not gonna be equal to one over five, 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 or even approximately, because we weren't working in radians. If we were working in radians, then the input would be the same as the output. That was my small angle business. So let's go back to our three chapters, starting at the end, chapter three, the decimal version of your number. I'm gonna write it as 1.8 times 10 to the negative something. Let's check. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. So 10 to the negative 6. But we're working in degrees, so if I wanted to turn it into radians, so that I could start using my small angle approximation up here, I need to check back chapter 1, my conversion. Turn radians into degrees. In fact, if we wanted to go the other way around, we better just check. That's just the opposite exchange rate. I want to turn my degrees, which is what the calculator was set up, into radians, so I'm going to just turn it into radians by multiplying by the exchange rate, which is pi over 180. So that was in degrees, and this is now in radians. I've done the conversion, which means I can now use this chapter two business to say this is approximately equal, because sine x and x are approximately equal, because this is small, there's no question this is a small number, it's approximately equal just to that number. 1.8 times 10 to the negative six times pi over 180. And you're beginning to see the light at the end of the tunnel. There's a pi in there, we can see where it's coming from, and there's some ones and eights possibly cancelling. So let's turn this into 180, if I make that, 100 times bigger, I better make this 100 times smaller to compensate times pi over 180. And now I think you can see that 180 divided by 180 cancels out, and I'm left with pi times 10 to the negative 8, which is the end of our trick. That's where the surprising pi comes from. You do a bunch of stuff to do with the number 5, and out pops pi to a very small power of 10. And the reason you were using 5s is because of the relationship between 5s and this 18. Yes, it's, it's actually to do with the fact that there are five 18s in 90. So recurring decimals quite often to do with the number nine. And ones where recurring doesn't happen after every single digit ends up to do with being 90s and 900s. And so it's all to do with the fact that five times 18 is 90 gives us a clue. It does mean that we should be able to predict what happens though. I had to do a scaling of 100 to get the cancellation to happen. 10 to the negative two, our hundredth to make it work. Otherwise, what you'll see is that it's to do with the number of fives. Over here we had six, and that six is not a coincidence. So we're probably in a position to make a prediction. We've done the process once with your example. We should be able to do a general one. Do you want to pick a number of fives that you haven't tried yet? I mean, ten. Ten fives. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There are ten fives. Before we actually do the calculation, this is the power of mathematics. We should be able to now predict what's going to happen. We're expecting a pi to turn up. But what power of ten do you reckon? If you turn this into a reciprocal, I think you'll get a power of 10 to the negative 10. But we're going to have to adjust it in our calculations like we did before by another 2. So I'm hoping pi times 10 to the negative 12. Let's find out. Take the sign. 3.14159 blah 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 times 10 to the negative 12. 
even if it's a pointless trick, at least the power of mathematics let us predict the outcome. There we are, surprising pi from uh, surprising fives. You know, when I graduated from high school, I felt like I was on top of trigonometry. And now, I'm not really sure I could tell you what a sine and a cosine and a tan really are. If you're anything like me and you want to brush up on what all this stuff really means, check out this amazing course on Brilliant, who are today's episode sponsor. This is a fantastic way to brush up or get on top of, or maybe even learn for the first time about what trigonometry really is, how it works, what's it about. Oh, look at that. Some of it's coming back to me now. This whole course has been lovingly designed by people who really know trigonometry, but also really know how to teach it. It's one of just many courses and quizzes and puzzles you'll find on Brilliant. Go to brilliant.org slash number file to check them out. If you use the slash number file, they'll know you came from here, but also you'll get 20% off a Brilliant premium subscription. That gives you access to everything on the site, all the good stuff. That's brilliant.org slash number file. The Number File podcast is available on, well, most podcast players. Just search for Number File. I also put it on the Number File 2 channel if you'd rather listen on YouTube. The latest episode, the one that's just out, is with Ben Sparks, who you've just watched. He talks about his life, his career, mathematics, and what it's like having an identical twin brother. Check out the links on screen, in the description, all the usual places.